Good evening, St. Thomas, and welcome to the Mayor's Update Live with myself, Green Lang, from Established Media, and our Mayor, Joe Preston. Being live. Yes. yes. <laughs> no, yes. we've got another fantastic week. We had Last week was just incredible, Mayor Joe. I got to tell you. I agree. Yeah, you know, we had the market. It was it was it was full. It was packed. Everyone had a fantastic time. Yes. And the evening at the market, incredible. I was there. I ran a photo booth. And if you haven't seen the pictures yet, they're hilarious. Nice. It's uh, you know, National Lampoons, a family Christmas like theme. <laughs> <laughs> theme photo booth. Okay, all I can think of is a great big hose emptying out the uh, RV, but. Yeah. <laughs> Paul, the CEO of the Chamber of Commerce, he brought the hose, he brought the hat, he brought the overcoat <laughs> <laughs> for Cousin Eddie. It was absolutely fantastic. So it's it's just, it's so nice to be doing these things again in St. Thomas yes. and seeing the energy of everybody. Well, and, it, and not just because they're fun, but mm-hmm. that's a great a- addition to <laughs> it. But it's just neat to see things going on again. It really, it, it really is special. So um, Perfect. Yep, absolutely. What else happened in the city over the past weekend? We, we should say we've got two special guests coming in right uh, at around 7.40, so in about seven minutes. Okay, well, uh, look, at the, between the uptake on the market, the Christmas market, there was a few other bazaars and other things happening in, this, in, in the city also. Um, and just the fact that people are out shopping, people are out doing mm-hmm. uh, I know that your, the daytime market uh, yeah. was as busy as it could be, um, uh, both by by the video evidence that you always supply me with, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just perfect. It, it uh, and but just you know, you ask so I, just mm-hmm. traffic a couple more notches up of people being out and about. The weekend was okay. It wasn't fantastic from a weather point of view, mm-hmm. but people said. Look at St. Thomas go, right? So I'll, t- I'll take it. It's perfect. Absolutely. And uh, I don't know if you saw, but I, I rescued a drill from the ledge I saw of Lockwood that. Books. And, and I said, what are you talking about? And then I went back and looked at the original picture. And yeah. I said, oh, maybe that. And it was what was on the ledge. So perfect, right? Cool. It was, so yeah. The workers, drills? That's, yeah. You know. And it was one of our viewers, Andrew, who saw it and circled it and, and posted it back in the comments and was like, hey, did you guys notice this drill? And it was the next day after I'd done the post. And I was like, there's no way that's still there. So I contacted them and I was like, hey, guys, is that drill still up there? It's not still there, is it? And they're like, yeah, actually, it is. And the contractor can't back, make it back until like Monday, but we don't have a ladder. And I was like, well, I've got a ladder in the studio here. So right. I'm I'm just going to walk that over and we're going to rescue that yeah, drill. I mean, it's almost next door to you. It's not that far, right? Yeah, not and far at all. The drill. Uh, you know, couldn't we get a bunch of guys with a big net down below and say, Joe, oh, hey, <laughs> inanimate object. But uh, uh, way to go. I mean, and by the way, the outside of the building, that building is looking very good, too. There's lots of... Uh, Mm-hmm. Again, remodeling and stuff happening in the downtown core also. So it's looking like better and better every year, which yeah. is it's so fun to see that. Like coming in from you know being around in 2008 and seeing what happened then, and then yeah. the progression has just been incredible. Well, we only have one more minute, but the the tree lighting, the yes. stealthy, stealthy tree lighting happened last Friday. Right? Sure did. Try to tell people don't you know it's not there. Don't don't look. Don't look, no story here. Walk on, um, but it really did allow the, the 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 tree to get lit. Santa to come downtown in a kind of stealthy way, mm-hmm. and I see the lights outside the mayor's office at City Hall now, so I know they're there. It's so nice seeing that festive atmosphere come back to St. Thomas, and we also have downtown Santa, who's going to be showing up one of these weekends on a Saturday, yes, giving soon. out cash, downtown and- dollar cash. Like cash, downtown dollars. It's even better than cash if you're out buying some of that right now, too. So we <laughs> will need to uh, share the whole story of downtown dollars, too. Mm-hmm. As, which is, we... yeah, which is that they're 25% off right now. Right. So buy a dollar for 75 cents and then go spend it wherever you want downtown and get a full dollar back. Now, you can think about what big thing you'd like to buy that maybe you could go buy a couple hundred of downtown dollars and it'll be like 250 mm-hmm. right? or 300 or whatever number you want. Um, 
and downtown dollars don't expire. We want you to use these as quickly as you can because we need this is to help our merchants. Mm -hmm. But what a great way to concentrate the buying power of downtown. And we had Paul on last week from Paul Jenkins from the chamber talking about buying local. Mm -hmm. And that certainly fits in this too. But boy, the sweet stuff you can buy in St. Thomas and Elgin right now um, locally without going far. Um, don't don't go anywhere you don't need to go and go ahead and shop locally and you name it, you can find it in St. Thomas or Elgin. Absolutely. I, I got to tell people about the special deal too right now is that if you get the downtown dollars for a 25% discount and then you buy Legends coupons, because I'm sure everyone goes to Legends and they enjoy it and you want to get a little extra, they have a sale on right now. Whereas if you buy $20 in their gift certificates, they'll give you an additional $5 in coupons right and so how can you do that right so i use the 300 dollars from the downtown development board and then i have now have 500 dollars i can spend throughout the year at legends which is perfect for getting as many wings as i could possibly want but because you know it's a place you will spend some money over time in the in downtown so why not pre-buy now at a hugely discounted rate some great savings and enjoy wings throughout the year that you've already paid for <laughs> when you're a little low on cash, uh, that uh, cold draft beer in July will work just fine. Right? Exactly. Like things slow down a little bit in January, February, March. You know, the arts, you know, I'm not doing as many paintings for people and stuff. So I got to feed myself. This is the perfect way to stock up to make sure I stay fed while hey, I'm painting. You want to see Keeners? Read the comments. Jelly, oh. Laney, and Andrew are watching us live tonight in the Pinafore Park Pavilion because we know we're going to talk a little bit about what's happening in Pinafore Park next weekend. And so they're there tonight in the, in the, in the pavilion watching. Well, we could actually, we could actually bring them in if we wanted to, to the what? show. Let, let, okay. Uh, Delaney or Andrew and Jill, do you have the ability, if I send you a link over Facebook, can you click it? And do you want to show us Pinafore Park? You let us know in the comments because we can actually bring you in here. And we're right. just waiting for Karen to join us. But Jeff is already here to talk a little bit about what's happening. So we're going to bring him in on the show. Great. We have powers now on Mayor's Update that weren't possible before. This is, <laughs> you know, I, I almost don't have to talk anymore. We've got audiovisual. We've got people off site. We've got questions being phoned in or sent in. Mr. York, how are you this evening? I'm doing very, very well. Uh, Mayor, thanks uh, for having me. And of course, the, the federal level of government is late, as always. <laughs> yeah. there, there's another line I'm just not going to use. No. <laughs> uh, fantastic. I'm, I'm glad you were able to make it. I know that we seem to have classed up the place a little bit since you were last on. We, we now can do um, calls in and take people's comments and and be somewhat live on, on Mayor's Update. And it, Graham and I are almost giddy as we find neat new things that the system will do um, as we're trying to talk about St. Thomas and, and area and how many great things are going on. Yeah, no, it looks uh, very good. It's uh, it's good listening to you guys banter about. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's You guys doing well. <laughs> I have had people say, can't you just play films or something as a reason you have to talk all the time? Um, okay, all right. Some of you don't appreciate it. I get it. It's all Graydon's fault. Um, <laughs> it used to be funnier. I don't know what's happened to him. Well, you, you're, you're mentioning legends there with those gift certificates. Yes. I, know, uh, I know what I'm getting Andrew but a gig uh, yeah. for Christmas. I mean, yeah. If, if Andrew ever stopped going to Legends, I think that business would be out of business pretty quick. You know, yeah, Andy counts on him uh, uh, helping a lot. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, just put it in a different color bag this year. And I, I got you to say it was last year, Andrew, but it's uh, it's in a red bag this year. <laughs> yep. And we actually we have a comment here, too. If you, I believe that some of the grocery stores also take downtown dollars. For yes, example, maybe downtown should. We'll redeem them. I say we, the downtown development board will redeem them at face value. Um, just call and let us know you have them if you're a merchant that has taken downtown dollars. So um, you, you're right that the that same uh, plan that you were talking about before with, with legends uh, and taking advantage of 
a special. They also have on while you're buying downtown dollars at a reduced rate. Keeps us uh, shopping in downtown St. Thomas. Any merchant um, should be taking advantage of this as much as you can. And as you said, there's a, quite a few merchants out there that also have an additional kind of Christmas special, uh, an extra five dollars or uh, fifty cents more. I don't know more off in January. Those types of things. So yep. think of the ways you can work make this work. We just bought a bunch of gifts at Given, and they had a twenty five percent off sale for board games. I think it was a week ago or so. So we sure. got our like our kids' Christmas shopping done. Nieces and nephews. Yeah. Well, and, with the discount. It's yeah, perfect. with the discount. And then there's also Zach was mentioning in the comments. He's saying, you know, you can take that discount. You could go to Foodland. You can buy some canned goods, and you can donate them to the food bank. The extra, perfect. What a great idea. You you get to um to get that good warm feeling, and you also get the um. The ability to help people in our community, and you save as you do it, and still able to buy Christmas presents. Hi, Karen. How are you? Hello. Well, I'm fine. Can you hear me? Uh, am I all good here? Fantastic. Sorry. Sounded great. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the show. You you well, that, you that, that, that long room. I can touch both sides, and yeah. So. It's How long have you been in jail? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Parliament, so I need these walls that will bounce my head off. So, yeah, yeah. So, well, yeah. you went on that that long ago, but we've really upped. Graydon has really upped the ga the game of <laughs> audio visual and uh, taking the show on the road and being able to uh, to interact with each other and take comments in. So, um, well, awesome. Well, I'm actually in a square room in the middle of Ottawa right now. We're in the emergency debate talking about the BC flooding. And so I thought I'd better come out and talk about St. Thomas for a while instead. Are you in one of the phone booths in the yeah. in the lobby? Oh, excellent. I used to, <laughs> yeah, you're right. They're smaller than a jail cell. It's a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and is there a lineup outside your door yet? Because that used to often happen while you're in the phone booth is, well, somebody get on the phone booth. I've got a call, right? I know, <laughs> totally, totally. All totally. the share, so. Yeah, totally. Uh, no, no lineup. Everybody's in the chamber right now listening to the debate. So, Excellent. Well, we're happy to have both of you on tonight, really talk about something incredibly special that's happening next weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. Our, our, our <laughs> Jennifer Park gets turned into Winter Wonderland uh, starting shortly and goes through the um, parade viewing of lights, whatever we wanted to call it next week, um, and then stays lit up with the help of some service clubs this year, too. So please, please talk. You chair us. Share <laughs> with us. Uh, I, I like it just sitting here staring at you and watching you fumble for words. This is yeah. great. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not often, but it's been one of those days. Hey, um, we've, we've got some EML elves coming into us uh, from Pinafore Park live oh my god do we do we have the elves coming today yeah well, oh fantastic oh. i didn't know they were coming we, we oh. forgot about how dark it is in beautiful park <laughs> <laughs> that big dark there is delaney and andrew oh it looks like they might have frozen up a little bit on there we'll, we'll bring them back when they're ready okay, okay fantastic <laughs> All right. So so let's let's tell people what this is. If anyone didn't see it last year, which I don't know how that would have happened because it was epic and I think almost everyone from St. Thomas made it. What what is a stationary parade and how is it being run this year? Well, well start with well, Jen. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, we call it the reverse parade. So there is uh, groups, uh, nonprofit groups, uh, uh, service clubs, you name it, churches. Uh, all putting together what would be in a normal parade, but instead they're making up their floats and they're parking them in, in Pinnifer Park. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, uh, there's going to be some lighting, as as Mayor Joe mentioned, and um, I'm giving a shout out to the St. Thomas Optimists who always yeah. run our parades, Yeah, um, are kind of coordinating this event as well. And uh, for a weekend, Karen, you can take over anytime, um, <laughs> people are able to come in. <laughs> Uh, next weekend, uh, December 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. What's happening, Karen? 
<laughs> well, uh, next, see, I, I've been in the House of Commons, so I'm trying not to heckle and interrupt people. I've learned in the last three days that's not right. So uh, <laughs> we're going to be, we're going to be having uh, probably over 50 floats, and they'll be all of the, uh, you'll be able to drive through, and they're going to have different pickups throughout the city. So we are, are working with, uh, I believe it is, help me on this bus company. I'm going crazy. Oh gosh, look at those photos already come out. But we're going to be having buses at five different locations throughout St. Thomas so that people can actually get on the bus. And so that, you know, we talked a lot about last time, last last year, there were some issues when it came to, you know, the traffic, the amount of traffic we had, and we did have people being picked up the Queso station, but that's being expanded this year. So if you want to get on the bus so that you don't have to drive to the park, there's going to be five different locations. So at West End, at Crocker Ave, across from the courthouse, you're going to be able to get a bus there. At the North End, at Password Park. Uh, south End, at St. Joseph's High School. At the East End, of course, Elgin Mall. And if you're looking at the downtown, just stop by Van Pelt's. There'll be buses there, and they'll be shuttling us through. I think it's students first that are doing this. And the community just really comes together and enjoys the festivities. And last year, we had so much fun. Um, Jeff, I'm not sure if you and I should be judging, and Joe, if we should be judging this year, because I know that there was a little pushback when when uh, the St. Thomas Chamber of Commerce got the best, best children, so we've got to be very cautious this year. <laughs> I thought it was the most childish re display we've ever seen, so I thought it worked perfectly. Um, oh, it Jane, you may want to tell people those were pictures from last year so that nobody's <laughs> running out to the park right yes. now. Yes, right. this is not. This is that, that was from last year. This year is the what is, is the third, fourth, and fifth? Is that right? Third, third fourth, fourth, and fifth. fifth. No, I yeah. said the second, third, and fourth. So I'm I'm, <laughs> oh my I'm going it's, Thursday oh. night. It's first student transportation as well. Thank you. First yeah. student, yes, and four o'clock starting on Friday night. Four o'clock, um, you may start uh, driving by the most beautiful lights in town and. Look, look at the really good looking people that we have in the park, even a week before the event. This is the we just finished, we just finished our site meeting where we had uh, one at three and one at uh, seven. And we promise we're at Pinafore Park for a good reason after dark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, Andrew, we were talking about your chicken wings at yes, Legends that. that you have three day, three times a week. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I heard that, and I'm hoping that the free. Uh, gift card that you get with your purchase also is coming and you don't scoop the free part of it. Um, you need to make sure the whole kit and caboodle comes to my gift uh, stocking. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like a credit card company. That's my charge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the delivery charge. Yes. It's a, but Andrew, you'll need to let us know whether you, you think you've been slighted on your gifts this year. <laughs> Oh, Jeff knows when my birthday is too. So, oh, okay, stack these presents up. Andrew's Andrew's waiting. <laughs> but did you, have you guys already talked about Santa Claus though? That the fact that Santa Claus will be at the end of this parade, and that no, is we have not. My favorite. Well, we should really talk about that. Oh, Karen, because... thanks for keeping us on, uh, on yes, track on here. The topic. Yeah. yeah, good. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, we'll let you guys go and continue your your, your talking. But uh, want to say thanks, Andrew. Uh, thanks, to you. thanks, to Lady. Are, there are five shuttle locations, mm -hmm. and Where five uh, locations. B. We, we have one at Crocker Ave, um, the parking lot by the courthouse on Wellington Street. We have one at One Password Park on the north end. We have one at St. Joe's. Uh, that's at the back lot, the north lot. Of St. Joe's, we have one at the Elgin Mall, and then we have one at Van Pelt's. So, if you don't want to drive through the park, first student transportation will take you through. And they were great last year. Yeah. Yes, They're that is great. great. And there are some people that don't have that type of transportation, and it was just a real quick way to get down to the park and see the displays on a nice warm bus with a group of your friends, right? And then, and then take you back to which of the five stops you want to go to. So and since they, I want to get us back on track about Santa Claus. Goodness of their heart. And I think that's <laughs> the great thing about this uh, parade in the park is that a lot is being done thanks to the goodness of our community, the optimists, Wendy's, um, first student. We have our security. What's the security company's name? Yeah. Uh, cash. Yeah. Uh, we got uh, tons of uh, St. John ambulances coming who are donating their time as well. 
Uh, do you know uh, towing is donating a tow truck to help us walk off some of the, the laneways? I mean, the community is spectacular when it comes to answering the call. And by the way, I should also mention, we still have a couple spots left. So if you own a business or something and you have a car or a, a, something that you can light up for the night, we can definitely still stick you in uh, for the uh, December 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Well, that's perfect. I, I, Karen, I don't know why you haven't told us who else is in the parade. Santa Claus. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe we would get to Santa Claus. Right? Well, you know, to me, it's about Santa Claus. We've got the elves on the screen right now. But, you know, for me, Christmas is really about the kids. And I love when kids get to see Santa Claus. Santa Claus was at the Horton Street Market last week. And it was amazing watching the kids get getting to see him and, and telling them what they wanted for Christmas. And so that was always exciting for me. So I'm all about Santa. Well, anyways, guys, we're going to have to head out. It's really cold out here. <laughs> okay, thanks for joining oh, in, Elves. Oh, thanks. Oh, that's what we need to hear is that it's really cold out there already this weekend. Um, <laughs> but that's the other great thing about the event that's going on at Pinafore Park next week. You're in a warm car the whole time, or in a nice warm for a student bus the whole time you're out there. Um, there was a couple of cold minutes last year. One or uh, two. Uh, especially near the lake. At yes. Lake Singapore. Uh, but, uh, hey, it's Christmas. It's supposed to be cold, I guess. <laughs> well, when you see me dancing, and if we can actually get Jeff dancing this year, that means yeah. it's really, really cold because I dance when it's cold just to try to keep warm. Uh, so we'll get Jeff going too. Joe, I know you're in for the fun times. So. Yeah. Hey, um, Graydon, you, you have a picture of, of, of Jeff dancing? Because I know we had some of those from last year. I, you know what? You might have to talk to Andrew about that. I don't have any of those on record, but you know, uh, I, I wore my long underwear and a winter coat and had some hot chocolate, and that I didn't need to dance. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was just Karen and I. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to make him a fun guy soon, Joe. Just a little bit more rubbing off to him. We'll make him fun like yeah. this. <laughs> hey, he's, he's internally fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what? You know, none of this happens without great groups. And we saw three of the people who, who put a lot of effort in it, too. And they, they won't blow their own heart. So I'll talk about Andrew and Delaney and Jill and, and all the rest mm -hmm. of the staff in both of your offices who just – Took, the, took this on last year and carried it even bigger this year and said, let's give something back in a year when we can't really have a drive-by a, a drive parade. This is a drive-by parade. We can't really have a parade driving by us. And it's been uh, – how many other uh, uh, EDAs in Ontario uh, did this? Or their member of parliament, member of provincial <laughs> parliament did this. None. And this is what's uh, special about St. Thomas and how well the two of you work together and how our community is a better place. All of Elgin and St. Thomas, because you're doing this stuff. It's, yeah. uh, well, I'll, I'll be honest, being back in Ottawa, I find out how many people actually don't talk to their mayors and to their MPPs that often. I'm like, mm -hmm. what? I just pick up my phone, call them whenever I want, text Jeff at what, 7 o'clock in the morning I have to, but it's very, very different in different communities. But Elgin Middlesex London is really special. And and Joe, you being the, the former MP and stuff like that, you know it's all about community here. So that's what we just Are you old guy? Is that what you meant to say? Yeah. Just, okay. Well, an old guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, you know, this is what also makes it special. Not just all the fun stuff, but that never stops. But the communication. Mm -hmm. We like to share good, bad, and other stories with our constituents and let them know why certain things are happening or when certain things are happening. And it, and it just helps that we, that we also get along. So that's great. <laughs> I, just, I just want to uh, remind folks, uh, last year we uh, collected, what, uh, $17,000, $18,000 from the mm -hmm. community members just throwing money in uh, firefighters' boots. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a special for bringing in some food. Yeah. You know, for our food bank. Uh, I think I'm really looking forward to seeing what, what the community gives back that goes back to those that need an extra hand this uh, this Christmas yeah. season. So that, that's yeah. it's tremendous the support out there. Well, Absolutely. We know we can do that and will do that here in, in mm -hmm. St. Thomas and Elgin. 
Yep. And we just had Karen McData on last week and she was talking about the food bank and that they're a little bit low so they could use a couple extra donations. So this is coming at the perfect time. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. With their new location, this is all exciting. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know something, Jeff, when you're talking about the amount of money that was raised, it's incredible. And then all of that money went to different organizations across. Although it's located in St. Thomas, we're helping the communities across this area. And, and that's what's really cool too. And, and I'm hearing about people last year when we we're talking about all of those cars that came in, people were driving like from Strathroy and all of those other places just to find some Christmas spirit. So if you're looking for Christmas spirit, you find it in Pinnafore Park on the 3rd, 4th and 5th of December. Absolutely. Perfect. Perfect. We can't look, this is the, the we'll talk a little bit about it next week too, as we get mm -hmm. right close to it, but we wanted you to take out your calendars right now, mark your plans down. You want to go Friday night, Saturday night or Sunday. Um, the park will be beautiful all the day, all of the days of next weekend. Um, and so start planning now so that we can uh, beat our number of cars last year, but better than that, as, as, as Jeff and Karen both said, the amount of food collected and the cash collected for our local food banks. We talk about working together uh, for a better community. There's another group, the group of food banks, of, of um, supportive charities that are out there across Elgin that no, it wasn't, hey, this is mine. It was, let's all work together. We'll make sure that we, we, we do as good a spread as we possibly can on, on the results. And let's put as many smiling faces in um, St. Thomas as we can. Christmas Care, of course, also helped with a lot of the food that came in, that they stuff in their hampers for, for the Christmas Care. And, and the food banks um, are just great at, at, at the rest of it. So, yeah. and, and just to touch on the traffic, uh, I've been told there's been a, a whole new design to try to minimize uh, the issues from last year. Remember the pictures where people are all the way down Sunset and poor Mikey's Pizza uh, kind of had to show, shut down their shop. So I think anybody who's wanting to order a pizza, um, just remember Mikey's, they kind of get hit pretty hard when the park's... Uh, Park's kind of full, but I've been told we're going to have some pretty good traffic flow uh, going in and out of the park. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that improvement this year. On top of, as Andrew and Karen have both said, five locations to be picked up on a bus and brought in so you don't have to bring your own vehicle in. Yeah, We, we did see lots of people having fun on buses last year. Um, bus loads of people yeah. coming in singing Christmas carols and such. <laughs> And this year, five different places you can be picked up and taken back to should make the whole route um, a lot better and uh, make it a little quicker for all of the, for the people in cars. But the other thing we did see last year, too, and you'll back me up on this, is the that every car was full. There's very few one or two people cars. It was full families or, or, or neighbors or or whatever else it could have been in the car um, to try and minimize the lineups. And I know that people will try and do that as much as they can this year too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we have our next guest, Donna Lund from the Harvest Bowl, waiting in the wings to come on. So, so you're kicking us off. Is that it? Or are we going to get here and nickel for Donna while she's coming? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's, it's awesome to see you, great, and great to you, Joe. Jeff, I'm sure I'll see you very soon. I'm going to leave this little room and go back into the chamber. <laughs> thanks so much for your time, guys. Really yeah, appreciate guys. it. Thanks. Bye. Hey, thanks, everybody. And Jeff, thank you for coming and sharing the news, and let's uh, make this a huge event in Elgin and St. Thomas. I'm pretty excited for it. Well, uh, it's great to see the community coming together. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Bye, guys. No, Graydon, you can't leave. <laughs> Donna, thanks for joining us. This is this is this is great. We love this new format where we can have guests in to talk about the fantastic things great. happening. Great, great. Uh, mm. um, and then I don't have to talk as much, and people understand. <laughs> Donna, tell us a little bit about Harvest Bowl. Well. Uh, I think I sent a PowerPoint there for Graydon to show some pictures too. But the Harvest Bowl was started out of concerns from farmers because of the excess food that we had. And we know that there's a need in the county, but how do we uh, get that food to everybody? We know that the food is perishable. So we learned of dehydration and so we started that. And so we decided to try it and uh, we started it three years ago and it's going great. So 
uh, the next uh, piece is that last year, we actually donated over 4,000 complete soup kits. And those soup mixes went to all the food banks right across the county. Uh, different churches and agencies also uh, participated. And we gave the large bags of food to uh, soup kitchens. Um, the amount of food is kind of staggering. We did 16,000 pounds of food. <laughs> And it was all from local farmers, all donated. Oh, and mm -hmm. I can't stress it enough that it's local. I can tell you that the squash soup, the squash this year came from Bob and Suzanne Carroll, uh, where the carrots come from, where we just did cabbage yesterday from Case and Anita de Drew. So I, we can tell you where all the food comes from. Um, and, and so that's really important that it is local. This is part of the process, what we do is you can see how dirty, the dirtiest thing is the carrots that come in because of course they're so muddy when they come in in this time of the year. We power wash them off before we can actually take them in and scrub them. And we just do what we call tip and tail them. Um, and then you can see volunteers there working away on, so I think that squash or potatoes. Oh, back up there, Graydon. Um, can you go back? And then I wanted to point out the star of the show, right there in the center of the slide, that's, that's our dicer. Um, that we can put through 10 pounds of food in 10 seconds and it comes out as perfect quarter inch cubes. It's perfect, it's wonderful. Uh, when that goes, we all run in to watch it. Uh, then we put that vegetables on the trays, the large stainless steel trays, and those trays, you can see on the bottom, they go in the dehydrator. Now that our dehydrator you can see at the top of the picture that is a converted tobacco kiln and we have two sides and that's one side that i'm showing you there 19 trays so that's a big space to fill with food how long will it take we, to generate uh, those trays Donna? we actually put the temperature up to 175 and it takes six to seven hours to dehydrate wow and then we, we just uh, turn it off and the next morning we come in and we take them off the trays and we put them into those bags and we store them. Okay, next slide, Graydon. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of volunteers to be working on this. And you can see the different stages of the volunteers that do this. And then after we bring um, the bags uh, sort of <laughs> out of storage again, our dietitian has made up our soup recipes and we have what we have our little processing lines of creating our soup mixes. And it's not just the vegetables we put in it, we put in the spices and the soup powder and on occasion milk powder for the cream soups because we didn't want anybody at the food banks to have to put out more money uh, for the complete meal. And there is other things you can put in it at home, but this is a complete meal already as it is. So uh, that's just, that is another picture at the bottom. We had a school here last last week, actually. Uh, some school kids came in and spent the day learning about cleaning and learning about how to put this together. So they were uh, they were pretty cute working on that. So how many it's, years has this been now? Well, this is three years now, Joe. Yeah. Yeah, and this is and this year we actually had uh, University of Guelph last fall. They did all the nutritional analysis. Uh, so now we have that on our, our soup labels. Uh, Elmer Express uh, does all the soup labels for us. And we did two sizes because at first we just did one big size and it was too big. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a family size, which actually is a soup of a, it's a Dutch oven. So it's a large amount of soup. Uh, and then we have now a smaller, a regular size <laughs> for people. And then you can see on the, on the side there, when it's reconstituted, it's a delicious soup. Yeah, that's incredible. Well, for those that don't, don't know, have not heard this before, first of all, it's a pretty well-kept secret, but we mm -hmm. try to brag about what Donna and her team does on the dehydrating. This is the collection of produce as it's harvested and not able to be used somewhere else, right? right. And then right. brought to you, and you do the cleaning up and cutting and dehydrating and then make up the soup mixes. But it's not for sale. That's that's not what this is about. This is about making it readily available for uh, food banks, shelters, um, 
uh, the, any place that's trying to help people get a better nutritious diet in a time of, of need. And um, Donna's been this way her whole life, just so you know. I, Donna and I go back a number of years of working together, and you should have heard some of the things we tried to do in agriculture. Donna was uh, Elgin, the Elgin Federation of Agriculture at the time, and I was the MP for, for a good part of it. But when, when I heard this one, I said, yep, that's got to be Donna. Look, look, look at what will happen. I, I think one of her questions of me is, do you know where to get a great big dehydrator? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we all have that information. Um, but Donna does, and look at what it's done for our community, and I, I assume communities around us. Donna, has anybody else grabbed onto your idea and said, this is phenomenal. We're wasting or plowing under too much good food, and if we just got it someplace to dehydrate it, we could do this type of work? But, you know, they have... Uh... They have done this in the past, of course, and they still do it. Uh, they take the food, they food do, do food recovery and then dehydrate it. But it all goes overseas. Nobody was feeding ourselves. When I learned that, you know, Wenningers already donate sweet potatoes to the dehydrator that goes overseas, I said, what about our own community that are hungry? Right. So uh, they were more than willing to be able to. Uh, provide us with their potatoes as well. Uh, so we did have a uh, business plan made that we could make this a large business, but that's not the point. The point is the community wants to get together. The community gives of its own assets. The volunteers want to participate. We could provide the model for other communities yeah. to do this. And an example to follow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Donna has spent a, a lot of her life putting smiles on volunteers' faces um, and the people in need and and the help that that's, that can be given doing this. But I, I'm not certain you, you can capture, if you've not been there, the size of these dehydrators and then the size, the number of bags of soup, including the large group soups, I guess, yeah, yeah. would be the way to put it, um, and and – how it's now going places where it didn't go three years ago. Mm -hmm. Right. And well, how people are fed nutritious food in the wintertime in southern Ontario's coldness, right, mm -hmm. that we're not being fed. This was not being available or it had to be purchased or it had to be uh, full, complete food donated. Um, you know how much a can of soup weighs be, be next to a dehydrated bag, dehydrated bag of soup ingredients? It's, right way better to transport too. Well, and the other thing is the, um, the perishability. There, we have some people who are unable to have a kitchen right. uh, and they can't put things in, in a fridge or they can't, they don't have a stove. Well, the, the, the vegetable soup, you just, you can have a microwave, you can have a hot plate, um, one pot and some water. And you'll have a complete meal. So we house family farms, markets. Right. They actually, we've had people ask if they can buy soup. And that wasn't the purpose of this. Right. But in order to make it sustainable, we did try a social enterprise piece this year. And so we've been uh, selling it through her how family farm markets. And I'm shocked. It was just, it, we can't keep it on the shelves. And hows are great because they're not uh, charging anything extra. All the money comes back and helps us pay for the price of the bags and the labels and that sort of thing. So we had uh, one, I have a couple of stories. One story is we have a church in London who's downtown in a core area. And they're so thankful for the soup that uh, they've been receiving that they've actually made a song about Harvest Bowl. So we're putting our pictures to it and have a video about it. The other story, and it's on the next slide, is uh, right here locally. And again, uh, Howe's Family Farms, they have temporary foreign workers. And they have them, they're like an extended family. They come every year. And this is a picture of them harvesting the, what they call Caribbean pumpkin or Caribbean squash. Yeah. And so that's the size of them. And so we did use these. So this will be in the squash soup this year. Um, but what was so interesting is that um, some of these uh, farm workers came from 
St. Vincent where they had a volcano and their families were affected by some tragedy. So um, Howe's had their customers uh, bring household goods or whatever they wanted to contribute and they filled a couple of bins and they were going back over to St. Vincent. So Harvest Bowl gave the large 20 pound bags of dried vegetables um, into these bins. And so here it is, a real circle story. We have the temporary farm workers come over here, help us grow and harvest our food to feed our own people, also to feed the ones in need, and they're in need, and now the food goes back to them. I just, I really was touched by that, the way the whole circle story that we all support one another uh, with, our, with our blessings of the food in this world. Mm -hmm. Well, Donna, it is human nature for those to help those that they can. And, and the only payment they ask for it is the smiles at the end of the day in a lot of cases. Um, you've added a huge bright spot to, to Algon County and, and um, some good warm food for bellies too at the, at the same time. But that was the purpose. That's, that, yes. that's why we do this. Yep. Um, and you know, we love featuring some of these kinds of stories, uh, what you're doing or what Ginny's doing at Grace Cafe or, or how each of these things work, because I think it shows the humanity of our community. Um, and, and we don't do it to wave. We don't do it for, the, for, uh, for any other purpose. And it's the right thing to do. And we thank you for you. And I know I'm speaking to you and there's, there's numbers of volunteers that, that, that oh, yes. do work with you. And I don't want to forget any of them. That's right. And then the number of farmers around that, that, that could easily just say, I've done enough work this year. Let's just plow this down and get, and, and get farming done for this year. Then Braden's smiling because I know <laughs> it's a bit of extra work to collect. But look at what the extra work gets. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. it's really quite significant. Great, and I've taken all the questions. Help yourself. No, no you, you've covered it. I mean, the, the, the final piece is just, Donna, how can people volunteer? And I just ask you, if you'd hold your mic that's on, I think a mic on your, your earpiece is just rubbing a little bit. There we oh. go. It was just kind of hitting. <laughs> it's I all good. It was Christmas tunes that we were playing there, so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was probably playing with it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's all these extra pieces in a, like a live stream show. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, to jump to the volunteer part, how can people volunteer and be a part of your organization? Because it's absolutely amazing what you're doing. We, we encourage anyone to come. As we say, we got all ages. We have school groups that come out. We have different churches, different community groups. Um, they just get, we're on Facebook, we're on a website as well. And so you can reach out to the harvestbowl.ca or on Facebook, it's the Harvest Bowl. And uh, it actually comes to me and I can let you know what days we are. It's usually Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday uh, that we're working. And uh, we're at, we're in Lyons, which is in Malahide Township. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so many people that do volunteer their time. And also the businesses, the uh, Dollar Carn gives us the free pro propane for the wow. dehydrator. Yeah. Um, the yeah. different uh, companies uh, advanced stainless just made us big squash cutters to to use so every time we we need something and we ask the community just steps up with uh, with what they've got and exactly. and willing and so willing to share this well, really does show how our community is so willing to share keep asking donna i mean we know <laughs> how much this helps and the more look and don't and don't be shy there you're right there's numbers of businesses in this community that are just waiting for someone to say yeah. how can i help what can i do in this case um so please um donna's giving you a, her, her email and if you have questions or at, ask them of grade than i will get them to donna or yeah. go directly to donna how can yeah. you help is give of your own heart, just like the volunteers at the group do. So, perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Donna, thanks Wonderful. so much for taking and if, time. And if yeah. anybody needs the soup, I'll also mm -hmm. get a hold of me, and we can yes. uh, make sure that you you can uh, uh, either we could drop it off at the depot, or uh, we'll we'll make sure you get it somehow. Yes. Even if I, I'll take it to Joe's. <laughs> yeah, that works too, right? I mean, you know, and that's how the cooperation works. And and we did we did just have Jeff and Karen on too, and we know how how much they are at spreading those mm -hmm. good news stories around mm -hmm. what what's just happening too. But also sharing the logistics. 
from time to time is who who can I tell that can help me get this done? And uh, I, I've never known Donna to be shy for asking either. It's uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, you have to get it done. You just got to ask, and and someone will find someone who can do. It. Who's got a truck? Who's got a, a tractor? Who needs what? We can do it. So yeah, Donna, thank you for what you do. Um, it's it's great to tell these kinds of stories. We we hear a little bit of how you know how the world's changing and. And this brings us back to the, mm -hmm. you know, 1800s, 1900s uh, of good pioneer community life yes. here in Edmonton, where um, your neighbor got the help they needed mm -hmm. from a neighbor or a local church or a local group. And this, uh, this brings us back to that day and age. And I wish mm -hmm. we can and I hope we can just carry that on and keep paying it forward. As you said, with the group from St. Vincent, that... Yeah. That they got the yeah. same help from the group where they come to work each year. It's just great to hear. Yeah, that's good. Yep. So if anybody needs anything or anybody wants to take part in helping us out, uh, please reach out. We can always we can always uh, make sure that you have a place with us. Thank you. Perfect. And uh, and we'll you know we'd like to spread the word so you can do more of the great work. So thanks, Donna. Thank okay. you for joining us today. Okay, thank you. Hey, have a great night. Bye-bye. Ah, it just warms yeah, my heart. Yeah, it, no, it, it is good. And you know what? I have this this thing about soup. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's not, you know, this is a great story, but mm -hmm. I find soup heals me also. When I, you know, totally. Especially in the, but I'm a summer soup eater too, but it just makes you feel comfortable. And so, when you think what we can do here for people who might not have had a meal today, but Donna helped them with the with the mm -hmm. with the gathering and the dehydrating and 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 making the mixes so that people did get meals today, um, that's quite incredible. Right here at home, and it's it, and it's like we were talking about before. It's like you're taking the food that would otherwise go to waste. Yes, and you're yes. finding a way to save it and turn it into wholesome food for people in need, and that doesn't get much better than that. No, you know. Perfect. Oh. And in terms of like your volunteer time, your volunteer dollars, that's an organization where like, you know, every dollar is going towards the product that's being created to help the people. Being spent the same dimes being spent four times is the way I always put it. I yes. mean, this, this is a dime that didn't need to be spent, but we, we did. We spent it four times to get food to people. That's 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 great. And it, yeah, it just shows what our community is about, you know, the way we help each other and pull these things together. And, you know, Don is very modest about it, you know, and so that's why we need to be able to spread this information and get the word out so people know about it, can volunteer, right. and then people also know that they can access it when they need it. Well, let's hope there's a number of people watching tonight from here in St. Thomas, from more of the urban areas, mm -hmm. and Donna mentioned even London using using some of the product, that didn't know we were doing this. But this is something, yeah. you don't have to be a farmer. You don't have to know agriculture to help with a volunteer project like this or, mm -hmm. or, or others like them. So please... Volunteer at your food bank. Volunteer with yeah. Donna. Volunteer um, at at in out of the cold or at Ginny at, at sorry at Grace Cafe or you know um, there's a lot of places where you can put just an hour of your time a week mm -hmm. makes a huge difference. And boy, do you feel good inside, and it's not just because you're eating the soup. Hundred <laughs> percent. So yeah. what's uh, what was happening at the city for the past week? Well, we, you know, no council on this week because it's one of the last weeks of the month. We we, we meet the first three, but we've been, um, boy, uh, we, I have a meeting. We have a meeting tomorrow morning with the downtown development board yep. and myself and most of the directors on from a social service point of view and the police chief and the uh, in out of the cold. We're 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 following up on the town meetings we said we would have. Mm -hmm. And this one, we're now talking about, we've moved folks into the Rail City Lofts. Mm -hmm. And very shortly, we'll be moving um, the new into the new shelter, the new inn, um, mm -hmm. in a bigger, better place. And we wanted to share with people how that's happening. Look, look folks, yes. I recognize we also hear, oh, look, at this is a terrible homeless situation or... Um, a mental health situation or or even um uh you know addictions and we, we we're not suggesting that the work is done we're suggesting the work is on the way to being done uh housing is a critical piece in our community and homelessness is 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 causing some of that and by us building the lofts and the new inn 
uh, and the next step within well on the on the Queen Street project, we mm -hmm. are seeing a reduction in homelessness, and it's not as fast as any of us want it to be. Right? Mm -hmm. I had a couple of questions today, as we said, we were coming on to talk about this tonight. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, what are you doing about the the, the homelessness crisis? Well, this is what we're doing. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. if we, yeah. Yeah, I like to I had a, you know, kind of terse conversation with someone the other day. Well, my, my city's changing. What are you doing about it? And I said, yes, you're right. It is changing. Three years ago, when we first formed this council, we... Mm -hmm. We didn't have a shelter in the summertime. We, from April to to November, there was no shelter. There wasn't a place to shelter someone who was homeless. We now have that every night, seven days a week, 52 weeks a year, uh, an open shelter that's never been at capacity. We have room to put mm -hmm. everybody who wants to go there. Now we, we 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 put also on the street the most team and the and the and the uh, Canadian mental health team to help us try and convince as many people as we can to come use that shelter system too. Yeah. Right? But we keep building uh, the housing to go with it. And eventually we won't need more uh, the, the housing that we're currently creating. Uh, we hope that with the, through the supportive housing that Indwell's doing, we have people who come off drugs, people that move into um, permanent housing, a real home of their own, a permanent home of their home. Of their own. So, if you're asking what what have we done, there's a there's a quick short list, right? If we mm -hmm. can add a bunch more to what the what our police are doing with extra patrols downtown and using special constables and 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 working on 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 getting face to face with people with needs, so that we can actually address them, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll just keep doing that. So. Yeah, that's the biggest thing in the city in the weeks when there isn't a council meeting is, okay, who are we meeting next about a way to make St. Thomas better? And and I, it's safe to say we are. And, yes, there's, there's, there's still some stuff to complain about, but I'd rather smile about the progress than complain about where we are today. Absolutely. And let's just circle back to the end a little bit, because that is opening. Is it opening at the end of this month, roughly? Like yeah, we, we hope by the 1st of December, but it may be a cut, you know, with, with some of the supply shortages and stuff on reconstruction, and that's a remodel. It, it, before the end of this year, for sure, and more likely within a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. um, 40 spots available at the inn, 40 mm -hmm. overnight spots available at the inn. And trust me, if we got to the point where capacity was a problem, we would put more than 40. We we can do these types of things. But mm -hmm. also now at the new inn, it's not just an over and out shelter and away you go. We, we've had the daytime rest center as to, to complement the overnight shelter. It will now all be in one building, yep. all in one place. Um, and during the day, we can do a lot more navigation with housing, um, uh, and, and basic needs of uh, identification and, and the such, and also, uh, um, you know, conversation on mental health and on, on addictions and rehabs. And, and all of those things will now be available all in one place um, at the inn. And as they are available in a more intense way at the Rail City Lofts and will be at the at the new Queen Street building we're building. We, we took this on as a city council and said housing is our reason for doing this we don't we do not run mental health we do not run a number of other things in our community but but housing is a responsibility of the municipal government and we're attacking it with every effort we can as a council and so i don't like to to think it's just me we there's eight councillors out there that are working yeah. very very hard on this and voting unanimously to do these projects absolutely and so in a report i heard about i think it was like a month ago they said there were you know roughly about 100 people experiencing homelessness yeah. with the rail city lofts which is about 15 apartments and then yeah. this new inn will have 40 yeah. spaces right so that is over half of the people that are experiencing homelessness in st thomas that will now have a place and the queen's in the queen street side is at about 60 units also so that mm -hmm. that in fact should be enough but as you as you and i know there's some that that won't come in mm -hmm. um, there's others that need special help to make these types of things happen um and if i can just touch on one other myth from that really was prevalent this weekend in my social media and that's oh vans full of people coming to st thomas and being dropped off buses full of people coming mm -hmm. to st thomas 
Thomas are being drafted out. First of all, there are no bots that run to St. To St. Thomas from anywhere. All right. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we, we know it's not like regularly scheduled buses or that type of thing. We also, because of our, our great cooperation between Grace Cafe, the In Out of the Cold, the most team, the street team from CMHA, um, and, and others act, actively working on the streets of St. Thomas, we do get to know the face. We get to, the, the, those groups get to know who are um, uh, citizens of St. Thomas or, or in need in St. Thomas. It doesn't take very long at all, a day at most, for somebody new to come to St. Thomas. And people are allowed to travel and come here. And some come back here because they have family here too, right? Mm. But it does not take a day for us to realize, oh, where did you come from? You know, c c who are you? We want them on that list of, of uh, by names list that we use to recognize who needs help and, mm -hmm. and, and, and who's here in St. Thomas. So, um I keep getting, you know, these stories, and great, I hear a lot. Well, my my sister's hairdresser's brother's friend's co-worker said there was a whole busload of people dropped off. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you've got if you've got that type of information for us, please let Chief Heritage know. Mm -hmm. That would be kidnapping, and we would like to address that. We also like to the minute we do find someone who's not from St. Thomas mm -hmm. that has gotten to St. Thomas. Would you like to go back home? How can we help you with if, if is this where you want to live? And if it is, obviously we do have some facilities, but for the most part, most people just through no fault of their own end up someplace they really didn't mean to be that, you know, in their travels. Um, and sometimes thinking, well, it's better somewhere else, so I'm going there. Look, the folks, we need to work together as a community. Mm -hmm. This is not anybody's fault, but it is our solution to do. St. Thomas can be a welcoming and warming place, and we will continue to work on housing um, and the needs of the people in St. Thomas. Does it also bring with it some um, uh, drug use or, uh, or litter? Yes, it does, and we, we, we are, we're putting something in place for absolutely everything that's brought to our attention. Will it be perfect? Not always, but we will continue to move forward as best as we can to be that welcoming city, that comforting city, and in our case, a very successful and economically moving forward city also. So we'll, we'll, we'll just keep, I'm, I'm proud to say I like what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. I think the progress that you and the council has made over the past three years has been absolutely incredible. And the way you're all working together with the different organizations that have a stake in this, such as the police force, and then in the cold, CMHA, Grace Cafe, all of those groups, and there, there, are, there are so many of them. Donna's group. I mean, Donna's yeah. group is helping supply uh, great food to yes. many of the organizations that are here working also. So it's 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 coming together slowly, but it's it's you know it's it's building these bricks up of support because you can't just rush in, and you won't you won't have a solution if you just kind of throw everything at it. You have to plan it out, build a foundation and then create a successful strategy that's going to last for several years. And I think from what I see, that's what's happening. And it makes me really proud that our community is doing that. Right. Um, and I think one of the things I was wondering too, is there were, there are some situations in the past where group homes would bring people in, in a van to St. Thomas to spend some time downtown. And then they would pick them back up and they'd take them back to the group home. So with these comments, sometimes what I wonder is maybe someone's seen a group of people from a group home that have been dropped off in St. Thomas, and then they're going to get picked up later and go back to the group home from St. Thomas, but maybe coming out of a van. It very well be, but if you ha have seen that and you have some sort of proof of it, not mm -hmm. anecdotal from, yes. but please let us know. Maybe, in fact, that is exactly what happened. Donna showed in her slideshow, her PowerPoint, a number of um, uh, men from St. Vincent who come here seasonally to work. Absolutely. Right? And in most weekends in the summer, yep. those same foreign workers, as they are, are known, uh, yes. farm workers of, from local farms come into town to do their shopping, right? Mm. Well, if, if a van full of them came in, I guess that could be somewhat misinterpreted that there's a van full of people being dropped off downtown. Yes. Yeah, I guess, right? But we're, we're looking for not anecdotal, right, uh, mm. what what someone told you, but, but real. We, we would love to be able to address these, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And uh, someone's asking us, how do I recoup the loss from from uh, people downtown who broke into my business twice? Well, the, the same way we deal with crime anywhere, right? Look, the chief would be the first to share with you, and I'll help. Um, the, our officers, our St. Thomas Police Force, doing a fantastic job um, of the, what the police are supposed to do to prevent crime. Mm-hmm. But we are, yes, we are, yes, having a problem with um, people being released and not charged and yeah. people not, uh, the severity of the court system not being there for us. It's not for lack of the mayor yelling or the police chief asking and us working through through Karen and Jeff also to say, we can't do catch and release like this, folks. We cannot allow people to cause petty crime or any crime and then just know that they can walk away from it. We think there's a little bit uh, of that happening and we're, and we're, yelling from the rooftops, we need to also work on, uh, on look, if, 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 if somebody needs help, let's give them help. But if someone is simply causing trouble, then let's, let's punish them for that too. I have no problem with us saying we need to do that. I'm surprised at the level of support, the lack of level of support we're getting some foot from the court system. Mm-hmm. I understand some overcrowding and, 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 and as the police chief likes to say a lot and is accurate, we cannot arrest ourselves out of homelessness. We, can, we, we must build housing to get ourselves out of homelessness. And this city council has said we will do that. We'll keep moving. You don't build an apartment building in an overnight situation, though. We have to continue to uh, deal with the people we have, help the people we have, and continue to increase the housing needs. Yep. And I mean, and what Richard is talking about is a serious concern in the downtown. Like I've also had people break into the building I'm in and steal stuff. And, you know, the reality is it's not worth doing an insurance claim on a smaller piece. Like if they stole every single thing, then it's worth it. But yeah, you're out, you're out of pocket and it is rough. I'd like it not to happen at all. Um, yeah. We've just even now, because we've more from the summer through into the fall into the winter, put the special constables on the street um, Mm -hmm. that were elsewhere and helping other places, moved the times around on the beat patrols downtown to help us better cover that, Um, continue to be welcoming at the the end because we moved people from the street were quite a bit better off. Um, And also the most team and the the mental health team and, and CMHA is really working as hard as they can too on uh, trying to house permanently rather than house precariously. Um, because we know that that's the solution. The housing first model, as it's called, is exactly what's needed first. If we do a better job of that, it will be very easy for us to isolate who's not cooperating, who is not um, uh, playing their role as good citizens. And we'll be able to address that better, but we need to cont- carry on with the housing pieces that we already have. Absolutely. And Richard, if you're still if you're still watching right now, we have the meeting with the DDB if you're down in the downtown tomorrow at 8 a.m. You would have been invited because everybody that was that is a merchant downtown uh, was asked. And and this is, as I said, the third or fourth of our town hall meetings about about a homeless about the homelessness and what we're doing with the shelters and the additional police services and mental health services uh, for the downtown. So we're We'll be sharing that again with the with the merchants from downtown or the service providers downtown. Absolutely. And, you know, we're all working really hard to find the best solution to this for everybody involved. And that's, you know, I, I've been in a lot of communities. I've lived in Guelph. I've lived in Toronto. And I got to say, St. Thomas is probably doing the best job of dealing with the issues that come up right now with uh, the increased drug use that we have in, across Canada. So it's not just a St. Thomas issue. It's all over. And well, we won't stop till it's done, um, but I'm, yeah. I'm not going to let, uh, we are not, as a council, going to let um, perfection get in the way of the good, right? Yeah. And it's not, it's not to minimize what's happening, but it is to say that we're moving forward and we're, we, we notice it, we see it, and right. we're doing our best to, to find the best solution. Right. And happy to stand in front of it. I mean, I, I recognize mm-hmm. this. Is, I, I am a business person in this community also. Mm-hmm. Um, and a former before before politics, the chair of the downtown development board. I understand what 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 we're trying to do, and boy, I wish I could uh, run really fast and make the world go faster so that we could get some of this done quicker. 
right? Yeah. Um, in three years, I'm pretty proud of what council's been able to to accomplish. Is there still more? Yes. Can it be done differently? I'll get a hundred ideas every day on <laughs> on social media, um, uh, and some of it not legal, but mostly. <laughs> Well, or, and some of it's not anatomically correct either for the man, just, like, just so you see, right? So we can keep working on it. Absolutely. And just to touch back on the positive aspects that we were talking about. Right. We've got the stationary parade that's coming up, not this weekend coming next, but the weekend after that. So the 3rd, right. the 4th, and the 5th, which is going to be absolutely magical as they would say and then there's also the harvest bowl initiative that donna was on talking to us about and sharing and we'll talk again next week about some of the magical part of christmas and what else will be happening in downtown and give you some more details about what we'll do there but if you have not gone and taken advantage of the downtown merchants um reduced cost of downtown dollars i guess this Mm -hmm. is deflation we're talking about inflation in our country a lot but if you can buy a hundred downtown dollars for 75 dollars and then go spend them like they're a hundred i think our downtown merchants should be able to uh, garner some business from that and mm-hmm. uh, and it and it seems to be working from all all, all uh, conversation and there's a limited number of those dollars being sold at that discount but we'll be happy to do it Absolutely. And as a business person myself, downtown supporting other businesses, I'm spending as much as I can over the holiday season to support everybody else. And then everybody's doing the same. It's just, it just makes you feel good. It's such a, it's such a great community and it warms your heart so much. So Joe, Mayor Joe, again, thank you so much for taking the time every week to do these chats and share everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, the wonderful. Well, I'd like people to be able to hear it from me. And so when we talked about things like buses full of people, Mm -hmm. I'd I'd like to give you what I know to be facts um, about that. And, of course, also about police patrols and as many other things as we can we can talk about. Um, I recognize uh, I'll answer your questions if if they're offered. And uh, Richard had a couple tonight. and That's fantastic. And tomorrow there'll be others. But I'd rather stand up in front of it and say, what are we doing? What have we done? Then um, uh, conversations that may not be true happen. Mm-hmm. And Richard says, thank you. And I do appreciate your input on my concerns. So, Richard, thanks for asking the question. Right. Thanks thank for you, joining Richard. us. Yep. You know, this is what we need to have that conversation and continue it forward okay. and find the best solution for our community. Well, the meeting is on a Zoom tomorrow. And if you were a downtown merchant, you were sent a Zoom connection. Um, so that we, this one is a concentration on the on on the downtown DDB members, but that's every merchant and service and building owner downtown would have received uh, the Zoom link. And I'm sorry, I don't have it here with me, uh, Richard. If you email me, it's Graydon at establishedmedia.ca. I can get you that link. So G R A Y D E N at establishedmedia.ca. Great. Thank you, Graydon, for bailing me out on that one. I don't have it <laughs> at this place. You got it. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks thank to all our sponsors. All. Thanks yep. to our viewers. And yep. thanks to Mayor Joe. We'll see you all next week on Mayor's Update, Wednesday at 7.30 or thereabouts. <laughs> We're getting better at, at the time. All right. You bet. <laughs> all right. Thank you.